The other day, I was working on a personal project, chugging along. Import this library here, another blazingly fast framework here, and then I realized something. I have no idea how these frameworks actually work under the hood. I mean, I get they're blazingly fast, but what's actually going on here? Every builder must know their tools. And in this instance, I have to understand what an HTTP web server really is. In this video, we're going to understand the OSI model, HTTP, socket programming, and finally build our own web server in Rust because learning is boring without building. So let's get started. First of all, we have to really understand the OSI model. The OSI model is a conceptual framework that defines how computers communicate. It's comprised of seven layers, like a fancy wedding cake. Matter of fact, let's call it the networking cake because I hate acronyms with a passion. The networking cake starts with layer one, the physical layer, the real world, AKA touching grass, the cables, wiring, and switches that facilitate the physical transfer of data. Layer two is the data link layer. It focuses on data transfer within the same network, breaking small packets of data into frames and handling flow control and error control within the network. Layer three, the network layer. It's responsible for facilitating data transfer between two different networks. It finds the best physical path for the data to reach its destination, known as routing. And finally, we've reached layer four, the transport layer, the most important layer to us today. The transport layer manages the actual transfer of data between systems. Think of it like delivering the cake to the right location. So where does TCP fit into all this? TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. Creating TCP sockets is how web servers are able to listen to incoming requests. Enough talk, let's get programming. First of all, we're gonna create a simple TCP server. So first off, we create a main function, which is the entry point for our program. Next, we make a TCP listener and we bind our open port to our TCP listener. Then we iterate over all incoming connections. Now we create a match statement to handle each incoming connection and the result that Rust produced for it. Next, we create a thread to handle each incoming connection and service it. We create multiple threads so we can have multiple connections at the same time. Next, we create a function called handle client, which takes in our TCP stream. In the body of the function, we first enter a loop, which will continue to execute while our TCP stream is open. Within this loop, a mutable buffer is declared, which can hold up to 1,028 bytes of data. Next, a match statement is used to handle the result of the stream.read operation, which tries to read data from the stream and put it into the buffer. If the amount of data read is zero, that means our stream has been closed. Now we can successfully break out of the loop and end the function. Now we understand the foundations of how TCP is used to establish communication over a network. Let's summarize it into four main steps. First was socket creation. Second was listening and accepting. Third was connection and communication. And lastly was closing the connection. You may be asking yourself, but what does this have to do with creating web servers? Well, at the core of every web server is a TCP listener, except web servers send back a resource that the client requests. The language the client and server use to communicate is something called the HTTP protocol. A request is a message sent by a client to a server in order to initiate communication or request a specific action. It's typically composed of four components. A method, which is the action the client wants to perform on the server, get, post, put, things like that. A request URL, which is the address of the resource a request header, which contains additional information about the request and the request body. The response is what we're gonna be sending back to the client from our server. Uh, for example, in case there was a server error or there was a 404, or we wanna respond with some valid HTML to display on the screen. Next, we're defining an enum to hold our HTTP methods. We also define enums for our status codes and we create a specific type of HTTP error. Next is the meat of the program, the server. The server takes an address, which we're gonna bind our open port to. Then it takes a hash map of routes where we're gonna bind a particular route to a route handler, which is a function for that route. Say for example, you've got a route called slash about. Then you would have an about handler, which will handle that particular route. Well, that rhymed a lot. <laughs> 
And finally, we have an optional middleware which we can add which will intercept our requests and have some particular logic run on there or intercept our responses and run some particular logic. Finally, we're going to create a function called run which is going to spin up our server by creating a TCP listener and handle each incoming request. It's going to spawn up a new thread using Tokyo and handle each request. The way it does this is that it passes each request into a handle route function which is going to match that particular route and return it if it exists in our routes hash map. Next, we're going to match on the response returned by our particular function. If the response of the request exists, then we're going to return the response back to the client. If there's an error, we're going to return that particular error and we're going to keep looping through the request for our server. Now that that's done, let's try consuming and using our library. We're going to instantiate our server and set up a hello world route, which will just return the HTML of hello. As you can see, we have our own custom web server serving our HTML from scratch in Rust. Next time you reach over for your favorite HTTP framework, now you'll have a better understanding of how they work under the hood. All the source code will be available in the description. That's it for this video. Make sure you go ahead and like and subscribe. And next time, we'll be creating something even better.